Hey everyone, Shabby Gamer here, and welcome to our Unforgiven pay per view for the WWF Attitude Era brand. So, if you've not seen the pre show already, I'd suggest you go back and check that out. We did have a, uh, a, we had a big championship match on there, actually. We had the European Championship match. We also saw Farouk taking on Big Boss Man, and there was an Elimination Chamber match to become the number one contender for either the World Heavyweight or WWE Championship. So, you can go back and check that out. It should be the video before this on the playlist. I won't give away any results just yet, but uh, I'll probably blurt it out at some point during the video. Let's have a quick look at the card we've got set for you on the main show, though. We're going to start things off with the, the culmination of the rivalry between Kane and Haku. Then we're going to see Dean Malenko defend his Cruiserweight Championship against D'Lo Brown, and Kamen Mustafa will be at ringside. We're going to see the end of the feud as well between Kevin Nash's Rhino as they take each other on in a Fool's Gun Anywhere match. We're going to see the world's greatest tag team, Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin, defend the belts against the Dudley Boys. Diamond Dallas Page defends his Intercontinental Championship against Chris Jericho. Batista defends his WWE Championship in the Hell in a Cell against The Undertaker. And then we have our World Heavyweight Championship match. It's going to be Elimination Chamber. The Rock defends against Rikishi, Booker T, Psycho Sid, Stone Cold and Edge. So without further ado, let's get straight into our opening match of the evening. And like I said, the opening match this evening is going to be Kane taking on Haku. And here we go to the entrance of Kane. Not quite sure I've seen the entrance of Kane so far in this game, actually. Uh, I think this might be the first time I've actually done it. Uh, we've, we've used him all this month during this feud against Haku. I have sussed out the issue with the feuds now, so we'll be able to do a little bit better next month. What it was, if, if you remember uh, earlier back in uh, it was last month now when I was setting the feuds up, I could not get them to work at all and I could not figure out why. And it's because if you do a feud on this game, you have to have one heel, one face. Championship feuds are fine. You can have face versus face, heel versus heel is absolutely fine. But if you are going to do a normal feud like this, you must do face versus heel. And I think Kane is currently playing the face and Haku is playing the heel, which is why this one works. So that is the reason behind that. If you have any issues with it yourself... Uh, so that means we'll be able to do some uh, some pretty good feuds coming up this next month. So we're also going to see the entrance of Haku. I don't think I've seen this one either before. I can't imagine Haku's got a very interesting entrance. I can imagine he's just walking to the ring. And here he is. Yes, he's walking to the ring. So this is quite an older Unforgiven arena. I think this must be... Well, it's not the Unforgiven I remember. It's an In Your House Unforgiven. So it must be like 97-ish. That sort of time, I would imagine. And this is a feud that's been going on now all month between these two. Yeah, we've had a couple of cutscenes here and there, and it's been a, it's been quite a good one. But like I said, I think we can definitely have some better feuds this upcoming month. I want to try and uh, push some of the other guys that uh, that have not been used a lot so far this uh, this month. People like uh, like Goldberg and Bret Hart, British Bulldog, as well as joining the uh, the roster here. But let's see how this feud culminates. It's Kane versus Haku. And we are underway. Who is going to pick up the last laugh in this feud? As you can probably tell, the game did glitch out a little bit. Uh, you might have noticed when we started and showed you the matches for tonight. Kevin Nash versus Rhino. For some reason, the game decided not to make a match at the pay-per-view for those two. So I'm not quite sure why, but I'll put the batch in there just to... Uh, just so we do have an ending to that feud, because it would be a little bit pointless about it. Kane starting things off strongly here, just wrenching the arm of, of Haku back. And the Kane's, uh, the Kane? Kane's brother, The Undertaker, could become the WWE Champion here this evening. I don't think we had him as the champion at all on 2K15, so it'd be be nice to see him with a belt. I think he did have opportunities. But of course he needs to defeat Batista. Batista who has already defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin to defend that belt. A backlash. Showing that he's a force to be reckoned with Batista. And also in the Hell in a Cell this evening as well. And hopefully we'll get a decent Hell in a Cell match. I know the game, the game doesn't have the best AI for using the environment very well. So that's a little bit annoying. But, uh, but hopefully we will get... We'll get that uh, a decent match here this evening. I've done a couple, and so far they are they're working okay. But like I say, they're not they're not fantastic. You don't often go outside the ring and 
tend to use the uh, the cell to their advantage or anything like that. They're generally just uh, they generally just uh, fight around in the ring. And I think I've done one random match with Mankind and Triple H where where I think Mankind stood out the ring and got himself a table, which was a uh, was pretty good. Hakuna just pushing his foot into the face of Kane. Kane now bringing Haku into the middle of the ring. Snapmer into a drop kick to the face. Not the sort of move you'd expect Kane to pull off there. Kane now pulling Haku into the middle of the ring and dropping a leg across the throat of Haku as well and might see Haku a bit more involved in the tag team uh, series as well. Uh, of course, uh, himself and uh, Rikishi are a team. Uh, I can't remember now. Are they the Head Shrinkers? Does that sound about right, Head Shrinkers? That does sound about right. Uh, so maybe, yeah, they could be involved in the tag team picture. Like I said, uh, world's greatest tag team are defending their belts against the Dudley boys here this evening for the second time in as many months. So it'll be interesting if they can defend those belts successfully once again. Uh, DDP also defending the IC Championship this evening. And Rikishi's actually got an opportunity to become the World Heavyweight Champion this evening. Now, if you're wondering why the people are in the main event, why we picked Sid Vicious, Rikishi, Booker T, Edge and Austin... Now, uh, we have done various qualifying matches over the previous month. That's why they've all managed to get in there. Rikishi actually defeated Triple H in a Falls Count Anywhere match to, uh, to earn his spot. Edge defeated Shawn Michaels. Um, what else happened? What else? Let's have another quick look. So, Stone Cold Steve Austin defeated Bret Hart to get his place. And Psycho Sid defeated RVD to get a place. So, uh... Yeah, everyone's really uh, earned their position in the main event here this evening. And of course, um, Kurt Angle won the Elimination Chamber on the pre-show. So he is going to get the opportunity to face off against either, well, either the WWE Champion or the World Heavyweight Champion at our very next pay-per-view. That's going to be interesting. He could uh, really end up with a really good feud coming up from that. And it'd be great to use Kurt Angle a bit more as well. And it might be a bit interesting because I've actually got Kurt Angle as part of a feud in Global Force Wrestling. So I'm not sure if it'll let me actually put somebody in two different feuds. I know they're on two different shows, but I'm not sure if it'll let me or not. But even if not, we can do it manually. And Kane with a big boot to the side of the head of Haku against the ring post. And Kane really showing this at the end of the feud here by, by laying out some incredibly dangerous moves to Haku. Haku slides back into the ring as well as Kane. But Haku, genuinely one of the hardest guys in wrestling, is back up to his feet straight away and dropping a knee into the inside of the knee of Kane. Haku brings Kane back up to his feet. And there's a huge super kick. Kane is down. Haku going to go for the pin. Here he does. One, two, and Kane kicks out. Haku can't believe it. Kane slowly back up to his feet. Kane throwing Haku into the corner. Takes him up onto the top turnbuckle. And Kane joining him at the top turnbuckles. Kane going for here. Oh, super reverse DD, uh, super reverse suplex, not DDT. What am I on about? Kane rolling Haku over. He's going for the pin. This could be all. That's a high impact move to land flat on your face as well. And it is all. Kane picks up the victory with that super reverse suplex. And Kane comes out on top of the feud against Haku. So, uh, interesting to see what we're going to do with Kane. Oh, is this feud over? These two still shouting each other down at the moment. This feud maybe could continue. Who knows? Maybe Rikishi could be involved in this feud as well. This feud, to me, does not look over. The way these two guys are acting, this feud, to me, does not look over. And here is the rivalry result. Victory. Kane has persevered and defeated Haku with a huge win. The rivalry has come to an end. I don't know if it has. I don't know if it has. Kane, of course, has now got a momentum boost and a hot streak. 
And Haku is on a cold streak. That's not going to be very good for him. Haku again. I've been mentioning this quite a bit recently. I think Haku could again be somebody who could be involved in the hardcore picture here in the Attitude Era. I have to wait and see what happens though. And here is our next match of the evening. It's our first championship match of the main card. As D. Malenko defends the Cruiserweight Championship against D'Lo Brown. And Karma Mustafa will be at ringside. And here we go. Lillian Garcia in the ring. She never seems to change her dress, does she? She always seems to be wearing the same thing. But the following contest is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the Cruiserweight Championship. Making his way to the ring first. Is going to be your Cruiserweight Champion, Dean Malenko. And I'm so glad to actually have Dean Malenko on this game. I don't know why. I didn't have him on 2K15, I don't think, but... He generally is one of the most underrated uh, wrestlers out there ever, I think. He was an absolutely fantastic cruiserweight wrestler over in WCW. And uh, I don't think he really got a true um, representation when they came across the WWE as the Radicals. I think he still did pretty well in WWE. But I think he, uh, I think he could have probably had a little bit more to him. But it's great to see him as the cruiserweight champion. I think he defeated... Didn't I? I think he won a ladder match at Backlash, if my memory serves me right. Let's have a quick look back in my pad. Do, 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 do. Where are we? Backlash. Uh, yes, he won a cruiserweight championship fatal four-way ladder match. Uh, Jushin Liger was the champion. He defeated Liger, Psychosis and Pillman. I forgot we've got Brian Pillman on here as well. So Brian Pillman, again, another person who could be involved in the Hardcore Championship and the Cruiserweight Championship as well. And here comes the Nation of Domination. Of course, D'Lo Brown in this Cruiserweight Championship match earned the right to this match after he won a number one contendership match. I think it was a couple of weeks back. I think it gets Eddie Guerrero, actually. Maybe. Was it Guerrero? It war No, it wasn't. It was not. Who was it? It could have been Guerrero, actually. I'm going further and further back in my pad. I'm eventually going to bump into it, surely. I might be wrong. I think D'Lo Brown defeated Ultimo Dragon in Ultimo Dragon's debut to earn the uh, the position of number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship. And he deserves it, I think. After defeating Ultimo Dragon, there's no reason why he should not be right at the top of the, the, uh, the rankings here in the Cruiserweight Championship. Ultimo Dragon, one of the world's best light heavyweights. I don't know what Karma Staff is looking at, but he, he doesn't want to look straight at the camera. He's looking everywhere else but... So it's going to be Dean Malenko defending that Cruiserweight Championship against D'Lo Brown. Dean Malenko looks a little bit like... Um, I'm sure he looks a little bit like Nunzio. That's his name. Is it Nunzio? Or Little Guido? Malenko now just pinning D'Lo Brown back into the corner straight away. And of course, um, we've not had much of... Um, of the Nation of Domination at ringside so far in this universe mode, but it has been very effective. I think The Rock had uh, Farouk at ringside the last pay-per-view when he won the World Heavyweight Championship away from Edge. So uh, Karma Mustafa at ringside here for D'Lo Brown might just help D'Lo Brown pick up some more gold for the Nation of Domination. Great power slam there by by D'Lo Brown on D. Malenko. Malenko with a jawbreaker. And Malenko pinning D'Lo Brown back against them ropes. What's he got planned here? The referee getting between D. Malenko and D'Lo Brown. And Malenko getting his own back for that cheap shot from D'Lo Brown earlier on in the evening. D'Lo Brown now getting behind Malenko. Just wrenching his back. Very painful looking move, that one. Malenko manages to break free into a headlock on D'Lo Brown. And now there's a great hip toss by Di Malenko. Malenko bringing D'Lo Brown back up to his feet and there is the suplex. Malenko bringing D'Lo Brown back up to his feet but D'Lo twists the arm and catches Malenko with a clothesline. Big uppercut by Malenko, and so far it's been a pretty even match here between these two, and uh, it looks like anybody could really win it. And I'm, I'm sort of hoping myself that Malenko wins because I'd like to see someone hold this cruiserweight championship for a little bit longer than a month. Uh, the game is still pretty early days in this universe mode, so 
nobody's really built up any sort of momentum or things like that. Because I noticed in the last game, the further we got in, the more it started to become a bit more obvious who was going to win. Because you could tell by the amount of victories people had had recently, the amount of momentum they'd picked up to see who was going to be in control. And that's sort of the same way we got here. Northern Lights suplex by Dino Brea, by Dean Malenko, sorry. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, uh, if at some point the, um, the momentum starts to kick in. I'm sure it will do at some point. It only makes sense that that should happen. Malenko now with the, the short Saito suplex. Dilo Brown going down hard. And Mustafa so far not had much of a uh, much of an influence in this match. But I think he might pop up when needed. I'm sorry if you can hear my mouse clicking. I'm just... Uh, I've got adverts popped up on my computer. I don't know why. I must have some sort of virus on the go or something. Dino manages to roll through on Di Malenko. Di Malenko, great backslide. Oh, I think I finally got rid of all the uh, all the adverts. Malenko now, great suplex there on Dilo Brown. Dilo catches Malenko in the front chance. He brings him up and drops him down face first onto the mat. And Mustafa thrown a chair into the ring. Referee being distracted by Mustafa and Dilo Brown went to use the chair, but Di Malenko caught him. Now Malenko taking Dilo up into the butterfly powerbomb. That could have backfired there in the nation of domination. Malenko in with the pin. One, two, and no, Dilo Brown manages to kick out. I thought he had that one there. I thought Di Malenko managed to uh, managed to do the impossible there. And come Mustafa now distracting Malenko as Dino Brown creeps up behind him and uses that reverse DDT. Dino Brown wiggling the head and there's a the leg drop. The referee finally gets rid of that chair out the ring. Dilo with a pin. One, two. And Malenko kicks out as well. Malenko with a huge clothesline taking Dilo Brown down now bringing him back into the middle of the ring Malenko now looking for a Texas Cloverleaf submission locks it in beautifully middle of the ring it's going to be enough to finish Dilo Brown off or is, is Brown going to be okay and he is Mustafa again up on the apron distracting the referee Malenko with a neck breaker Di Malenko goes the very, very long way around of making it up to that top rope. What has Malenko got planned here? Big elbow drop. In for the pin. One, two, and three. And there you go. Di Malenko successfully defends his Cruiserweight Championship. And Di Malenko is not the Cruiserweight you'd normally expect to see up top. But it's definitely worked for him here this evening. See, Dilo Brown went to try and use that chair, but... Malenko just punched straight through the chair, catching Dilo in the face, and that really backfired. Then Di Malenko hit that butterfly powerbomb, and it was not enough to finish Dilo Brown off at that point. And there's the sign guy again, right in the way. You see, Kam Mustafa got right in the face of Di Malenko, trying to distract him as much as he possibly could. There's a reverse DDT by Dilo Brown. A little wiggle of the head. And then drops in the leg drop to to Di Malenko in for the pin he went and again that was only enough for a two count very close to a three count though there's Malenko with a Texas Cloverleaf submission hold on on Dilo Brown and you see Di Malenko not the cruiserweight you normally expect to see up top he's much more the technical cruiserweight but it's very effective there's the diving elbow drop straight into the pin and it's enough for the one the two and the three count so our first championship match this evening has ended up in a successful championship defence. We've still got four more championship matches for you. How many others of those will end up in successful defences? That's going to be the interesting question. And I do like Di Malenko, as I made it clear on his entrance. He's somebody who I think is very much underrated. So it's great to see him finally get in the... Uh, finally get in the, um, the credit he deserves in this universe mode. And our next match here this evening is going to be the culmination of the feud between Kevin Nash and Rhino in a Falls Count Anywhere match. 
And here we go with the entrance of, is it Big Sexy Kevin Nash first? Was it Big Sexy? It is Big Sexy. No, it's Big Daddy Kevin Nash. Where did I get Big Sexy from? I have no idea. The Kevin Nash. And eventually, we will get the uh, the other downloadable contents, uh, which I'm hoping to get pretty soon. I'm assuming the next one is going to be the, the showcase one, um, which I believe will include Scott Hall. So we can start to use the Outsiders as a tag team. I think it also includes Stevie Ray. So Harlem Heat can then become a tag team in our universe mode as well. So that gives us two brand new tag teams to add to our division. Um, it's quite a few of people. We've got, um, what is her name? There's another lady coming. I can't remember what her name is. Come on. Come on. Who is it? 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 I've got her name. But she is on the uh, downloadable content as well. She'll get involved in the women's division here on the Attitude Era. Uh, I'm still trying to remember her name. Oh, that's going to annoy me now. That's going to annoy me. And is there, I think, apart from men, for you, I'm not quite sure there's a lot of others in that pack we've been used in the Attitude Era. Um, but of course, we'll do some random matches just to show them all off, show what they're all like. And here comes the War Machine Rhino marching his way to the ring. Now, Rhino, of course, is also working NXT as well as this... Um, I love the way that he just subtly throws away the little Cena rag there without hopefully anyone noticing. So yeah, Rhino versus Big Daddy Kevin Nash. It's going to be a very hard-hitting match, this one. Very hard-hitting match. And it's going now. So here we go, Big Daddy Kevin Nash, Rhino, the war machine, full scan anywhere, which means no disqualifications, no count outs, this could really go absolutely anywhere really. Rhino has a hold of a baseball bat, that's not good news for Kevin Nash, but it is now as Kevin Nash takes the baseball bat away from Rhino and tries to use it, but Rhino manages to wrest it back away from Kevin Nash. And Rhino does use it, running straight across the ring and just bashing it straight into the stomach of, of Kevin Nash, now just bashing him with it while he's grounded. Rhino just launching Kevin Nash straight up into the air and dropping him down. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, and he fell very, very hard. Nash now wrenching back at the chin of Rhino. Rhino looking to try and break free. He's not quite got enough leverage behind him. Oh, it looks like he might be getting there now. Gets back up to his feet and drops Kevin Nash in a jawbreaker. Kevin Nash straight up though and into a gut buster on Rhino. They're dropping the elbow into the back now. As I said, this is a rivalry that's been going on for a few weeks. We had a couple of uh, glitches in this rivalry which led to me playing one of the matches, I believe, as Kevin Nash, if I remember correctly. And uh, yeah, there's still quite a few glitches in this game, as I mentioned quite a few times. I think that 2K's job on this game is not yet complete. They've got a bit of work left to do, in my opinion. I know there's, a, there's some, more, um, some more patches, some more glitches that need fixing. And uh, I'm hoping they're not just going to wait and keep doing all of the... Um, all the downloadable content as a patch because it needs to be sorted out a little bit earlier than this, I think. Like I said, if you've been watching my videos a lot, you will have noticed there's been a few this month. They're mainly on feuds. It's like the cutscene happens and then AI versus AI, they just stand there and don't do anything. And I just can't understand why. It's a little bit annoying. But hopefully it will be fixed soon. And Kevin Nash has won. So I, I just had another advert pop up my screen and I had no idea what was going on. I've just noticed that Kevin Nash has won the match. When did that happen? Big right hand rolls him over into the pin and obviously the damage done by the baseball bat was enough. I really apologise. I wasn't paying full attention. I was trying to get rid of the... I keep getting adverts popping up on my screen. I, it's really an aggravating me. So I'm going to 
probably stop the recording now and just try and fix whatever problem this is because it keeps popping up while I'm trying to commentate. But yeah, Kevin Nash victorious here in this feud. We'll have a quick look at the feud culmination, see how it's all ended up. It's not, is it? Because the feud glitched out, isn't it? Okay. Well, we got go to our next match instead then. Good win here for Kevin Nash though. And our next match here this evening is going to be the Tag Team Championship match as the world's greatest tag team take on the Dudley Boys. And here we go. I'll tell you what, the, the loading screens when you're running entrances are so long. That's probably that's one of the main reasons why I um, I skip entrances normally when we do the uh, when we do the universe mode because it really does it really does uh, increase the length of the uh, the um, the loading screens. That's the words I'm looking for. The world's greatest tag team won the belts at the tag team championship tournament earlier on in the universe mode, and of course they defended them successfully against the Dudley Boys last month at Backlash. So they're looking to defend them once again. Of course, the Dudley Boys looking to take advantage of their second opportunity here. And uh, yeah, I, I was. I, I thought the Dudley Boys would do better than that last month. I think they were the only championship not to change hands last month, actually. Well, apart from Batista defending against Austin. Apart from that, the tag team championships and. It's, it's pretty good actually because I know a few a few of you out there actually had actually suggested that you'd like to see the world's greatest tag team hold on to the belts for, for quite a while and and I'm sort of with you on that. I'd love to see the uh, the world's greatest tag team hold the belts for a little bit longer. But then again, the Dudley boys are here and the Dudley boys would not like to see that. They would like to take them belts away from them. So referee holds the belts up high. The same referee as always. World's greatest tag team versus the Dudley boys. And here we go. Who is going to walk out of here with the Tag Team Championships? Will it be a successful defence for the World's Greatest Tag Team once again? Or will the Dudley Boys finally be able to take these belts away from them? But now just kicking the inside of the fire, Charlie Haas. Now bringing Haas back up to his feet. Slams him down. Bubba Ray with a big kick to the back of Charlie Haas. And now just dropping the leg across the chest as well. Bubba Ray with the pin. One, two. Oh, it's almost a free count already. Wow. Charlie Haas is not looking in a very good uh, position at the moment. And again, Bubba Ray with the continued assault elbows to the forehead. now bringing Charlie Haas across onto that rope, brings him off the far rope and brings him down hard and so far Bubba Ray Dudley is dominating this match here against Charlie Haas Bully throwing Haas into the corner but Haas taking out Bully Ray chopping that ankle away Benjamin spinning Bully Ray around and there's the big angle slam almost there. And Bubba Ray seemed to have uh, seemed to have the number of Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin seems to be coming back into it now. Reverse suplex there by Benjamin again on Bubba Ray Dudley. I think we might see Benjamin a bit more in some singles competition as well. And I think also... Of course, you will see the world's greatest tag team in Global Force Wrestling at some point. They are currently on the roster, but since they are the tag team champions, I've sort of kept them away from it a little bit. Sort of just to try and uh, just to try and keep it a little bit more a little bit more realistic, because I don't really want the world's greatest tag team turning up with the tag team championships on Global Force Wrestling. But they'll definitely be involved when we come across things like the uh, the World Tag League 
and uh, we'll come across things like um, the DDT4 tournament, even King of Trios, because I think King of Trios, we're going to have quite a few trios in there, and I'm thinking that Team Angle could be one of those trios. We've got Kurt Angle over there anyway. We've got Shelton Benjamin. We've got Charlie Haas all on the roster, so why not? And still the W boys dominating this match at the moment. d -bomb with a big flapjack there on Shelton Benjamin, bringing him away from the ropes. d -bomb goes in for the pin. One, two, and Benjamin kicks out. d -bomb trying to continue the assault, but Benjamin catches him with that elbow. That looked a bit low to me. Devon now just slamming Benjamin down. And Devon stalking Shelton Benjamin. What's he got planned here? Takes him up. And a power driver by Devon Dudley on Shelton Benjamin. Could be a brand new tag team champion. He pulls him away from the ropes. In for the pin he goes. One, two. And Bubba just could not get to Charlie Haas in time. He was close but just could not get there in time. Devon continues the assault. There's the Russian leg sweep on, on Shelton Benjamin. I just kick into the inside of the leg as well, and Bubba Ray Dudley takes Charlie Haas to the outside. At the moment, it's looking very one-sided. It's looking like we should have two brand new tag team champions here this evening. Devon Dudley now with the, the double backbreaker. Is he gonna go for another pin maybe? No, he's gonna roll Shelton Benjamin over. And just stamp the inside of the knee down hard. Devon brings Benjamin back up to his feet and sends him into the turnbuckles. Charlie Haas finally taking control of a bubbery done in the outside. Devon launching Shelton Benjamin across the ring, going for a pin once again. One, two. And we have got brand new tag team champions. Bubba Ray Dudley did enough to keep Charlie Haas out of it. And Devon Dudley managed to finish off Shelton Benjamin and brand new tag team champions we have. Very interesting situation here this evening. So we have seen our first championship change of the evening. Well, it depends if you class the pre-show. Of course, we saw Eddie Guerrero pick up the European championship on the pre-show. Di Malenko successfully defended his Cruiserweight championship. And now the Dudley boys have successfully won the Tag Team Championships away from the world's greatest tag team. And we still have three more championship matches coming up for you next. We've got Diamond Dallas Page defending his Intercontinental Championship against Chris Jericho. Then we're going to see Batista defending his WWE Championship against The Undertaker inside the Hell in a Cell. And of course, the Elimination Chamber main event. The Rock defending his World Heavyweight Championship against Sid Vicious, Rikishi, Booker T, Edge and Stone Cold Steve Austin, the former WWE champion. So I think this was the first pin after the power driver. And you see Bubba Ray Dudley was close to getting round, but Charlie Haas was just there in time. You see Haas had been completely distracted by uh, what was being done by, by Bubba Ray. And in fairness, I think Haas probably should have got across to this one. You see Devon going for the pin. Haas was slowly through the ropes and the referee had already got to a free count before Haas had even made his way into the ring but brand new tag team champions either way the Dudley boys and they never held the gold on our 2k15 universe mode in WWE so it's great to finally see them have it now but how long will they have to hold it for that's going to be the big question there's a lot of big teams in this universe mode that will really be interested in trying to get them belts away from the Dudley boys including the Nation of Domination. We've got the Head Shrinkers, the Brothers of Destruction. Of course, World's Greatest Tag Team. I want a rematch at some point. There's a real lot of uh, fantastic teams. Here's our next match of the evening. It is that Intercontinental Championship match as Diamond Dallas Page defends against Chris Jericho. Lillian Garcia in the same purple dress as normal. The following match is scheduled for one fall and it is for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. 
making his entrance first is the champion none other than Diamond Dallas Page now DDP is a uh, I don't think I actually truly appreciated DDP when he was a wrestler it's only since I've gone back and watched some of his work that I've really sort of got DDP I don't know I don't know if it's just me or what but I think I don't know it's it's a, it's a little bit difficult because some people rate him on his on uh, as one of their hired one of the most overrated wrestlers of all time DDP and others rank him as one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time so it's quite difficult to see but I think Intercontinental Championship is a perfect level for him to be at at the moment in our universe mode may even get a little bit of a chance higher up who knows but yeah it wasn't until I started doing his DDP yoga as well and anybody who takes the mick out of yoga just give this a try because this is absolutely it's lethal it's not very easy at all and of course DDP's opponent is going to be none other than Christoph Jericho it's a pretty cool entrance oh, he needs to have the old coat on doesn't he so Chris Jericho is going to be a big worry here for DDP. It's, a, it's not a very easy first championship defence. Chris Jericho, one of the best intercontinental champions in history. And he has a chance to win that IC belt here again once more this evening. So looking forward to this one, you know. I really am. Once I, when I looked at the entire card, this one of the matches that instantly drew my eye. I really wanted to see this match. And I think it's going to be a really good match. Like I said, Chris Jericho is probably good enough on this game to be challenging with the big guns in the Elimination Chamber here this evening. But he got the number one contendership for the IC title, and that's what we put him into. I think he's actually rated plus 90 on this game, which, uh, which does make him a little bit overkill for the IC Championship. But if he does win it, then it means he'll probably hold on to it for quite a while as well. It'd be great when Scott Hall comes in as well. Scott Hall, Chris Jericho, DDP. We're going to have quite a strong Intercontinental Championship sort of roster. So the referee holds the Intercontinental belt high. That's what it's all for. As Diamond Dallas Page defends against Chris Jericho. Referee rings the bell and we are underway. Both these guys itching to get a good start in this one. DDP, of course, wants the he won the Intercontinental. Yeah, yeah, let's try that again. He won the Intercontinental Championship at the last pay-per-view backlash when he defeated William Regal. Now Regal again is someone that has not had a rematch to the IC Championship, and I definitely think he deserves it. He's a, he's a top-class wrestler. And I think he is genuinely one of the most underrated wrestlers of all time. And he'll definitely get a lot more use in this universe mode. Be it European Championship, be it Intercontinental Championship, or be it just Fuse. Or maybe even a little bit higher. Who knows? Maybe he could get the opportunity at some point. I'm thinking, you know, whether we might be able to... Um, to mix our tag teams a little bit now let me know what you think on this one i'm not quite sure if the tag team we've got together is is the best one really to go for we've got at the moment fit finney and william regal as the british bruiser that's what we've got at the moment would you think it would be better to maybe mix finney in with ken shamrock as an irish tag team and then have william regal teaming up with british bulldog as an english tag team that way it gives us an extra two tag teams and it means we probably could feud Fit Finney with uh, with William Regal at some point, which I think would be quite a pretty good feud. It's a possibility. Chris Jericho in control this match at this point in time. There's the atomic drop there on Diamond Dallas Page. And after this match, we are fully locked in cages the whole way through to the end of the night. We've got Hell in a Cell, Batista versus The Undertaker coming up next. And of course, the Elimination Chamber match, Rock, Sid Vicious. Rikishi, Booker T, Edge and Austin being locked in there and the interesting thing about that one is that anybody could win it really because especially when you don't know what the, the entrance is going to be you could probably look at that card and think yeah Rock and Austin are probably the strongest two 
Uh, Edge is pretty good as well, but they're all they're all pretty good, of course. They they wouldn't have made it into the match if they weren't. But you think that if someone like Rock is drawn at number one, and someone like Booker T is drawn at number six, then Booker T instantly becomes probably one of the favourites. So it's a tricky one to really to really sort of look at, really, because you don't know how it's going to work out. DDP now rolling. Chris Jericho now dropping an elbow right into the chest of Jericho. Again, DDP bringing Jericho back up to his feet. And DDP with that great complete shot. And now, I thought DDP was actually lining Jericho up there, decides against it. Could have been looking for a diamond cutter. Page just dropping the boot onto the shoulder of Jericho. Now Jericho with a snapmare on, on Page. And locking in a reverse chin lock. Bringing Page back down to a lane position. Dan Dallas Page is back up, big right hand. And has him up in a vertical suplex, dropping Jericho down hard into the middle of the ring. Page brings Jericho back up to his feet. And again, taking Jericho up. There's a spinning powerbomb. Sit as well into the pin. One, two, and Jericho kicks out. I thought Page might have had it there. Successful championship defense, but wasn't to be the case at this point. Might still be, though. Jericho sending Page off them far ropes, brings him back and catches him with that over the top. Almost like a belly to belly, but not quite. Jericho now bringing Diamond Dallas Page away from the away from the ropes. Jericho with that reverse suplex on DDP. And Jericho with a lion salt. We can have a brand new intercontinental champion here. Jericho hit the lion salt in for the pin. One, two, and DDP kicks out as well. Wow. Two matches there where I thought it was really definitely going to be over. Jericho with a Hurricanrana. Again, bringing DDP back up to his feet. Now Jericho trying to turn him over. Into the walls of Jericho and does finally get it locked in. Is this going to be enough? Oh, DDP manages to, to force his way out. Neck breaker there by DDP. And Diamond Dallas Page is lining Chris Jericho up. Could he be looking for maybe the diamond cutter? He does. He hits the diamond cutter perfectly. Can he get the win? Can he get the pin here? There's the pin. One, two. And no, Jericho kicks out again. Holy guacamole. I can't believe I used that phrase either. I apologise. Profusely. I do like my Mexican food though, so I brought... I'm, I'm hungry. My dinner's in the oven right now and I'm just thinking about food now, which is why which is why the guacamole got brought up. DDP just wrenching back at the leg of Jericho and stomping on the chest as well. Jericho manages to slide back into the ring and leaves the ring. DDP follows him though. And I think Jericho might have a play mind games now with DDP. Catches him straight away as he comes back into the ring. There's the reverse DDT onto his knee. Backbreaker style. One, two. And no, DDP kicks out once again. What a match this has been between these two for the Intercontinental Championship. Like I said, I knew this was going to be a good one. Backdrop by Jericho. Bringing DDP away from the ropes. And another Lion Salt. In for the pin. One. Two. And no. I was convinced that was a brand new Intercontinental Champion there. But DDP proved me wrong. Jericho now again just stamping the knee into the mat of, of DDP. Brings him back up to his feet once again. 
Hooks the legs. He's going to roll him through. He does roll him through into the walls of Jericho. DDP trying to crawl his way to the ropes. And again, manages to force his way out. What a match this has become out of these two. It's difficult to even see who's going to become the winner, the new Intercontinental Champion, or the defending Intercontinental Champion. Jericho's going up top, but I don't think he's realised that DDP was back up, and Jericho gets caught with the right hand and drops to the outside. DDP looks to follow him out there as well. Jericho catches him with a drop kick. He's stomping on the chest of, of Diamond Dallas Page and on the back of the leg as well. Jericho with a big kick to the stomach now, a big right hand as well. And a look for a, I thought he was going to go for a German suplex, but actually a belly to back slam. Both guys slide back into the ring, breaking the referee's count. Jericho again with another massive drop kick. Jericho back up at his feet now. William Diamond Dallas Page back up to his feet as well. Jericho with the belly to back slam on Page. Jericho needs to do something. What's he going to be? It's another line salt. That's the third line salt of the match. Surely, surely that's going to be all. Oh my word. Oh my, what? What? Just what is it going to take to finish this match off? I just, don't, I just don't know at the moment. It's absolutely impossible. I thought DDP was going for the diamond cutter. They went for a snapmare instead. Lock it in the chin lock on Chris Jericho. Wrench him back. Both guys slowly back up to their feet. Jericho with the big elbows to the gut of Diamond Dallas Page. Page with a big kick to the stomach and another one. And a right hand. And another punch. And a massive one sending Jericho down to his back on the ground. DDP bringing Jericho back up to his feet. There's the spinning powerbomb in for the pin. One. Two. And three, and that's it. Diamond Dallas Page has successfully defended the Intercontinental Championship over Chris Jericho. And what a fantastic win that is. He's done a fantastic job here, Diamond Dallas Page. Really, it was it's incredible. He took so much damage, but showed so much resilience to stay in this one. Three lion salts, two walls of Jericho. But still, Diamond Dallas Page managed to come back. It took a couple of uh, spinning, twisting, rotating power bombs and a diamond cutter as well to finish him off. But what a great win that was for Diamond Dallas Page, really showing that he is the man at the moment. Like I said, Chris Jericho is a man with stats high enough to be going for the WWE and World Heavyweight Championship. But he's down here fighting for the Intercontinental Championship. And yeah, what fantastic work by Diamond Dallas Page to defeat him. It really does prove that he is the man. He is destined to be Intercontinental Champion. So that's two big victories for, for DDP now. Of course, he defeated William Regal at Backlash to win the belt. And now, of course winning here at Unforgiven to successfully retain the championship. And here's our next match of the evening. It's going to be the WWE Championship match as Batista defends against The Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell. The following match is scheduled for one fall and it is for the WWF Championship. And as you can see the cell is hanging above Lillian Garcia there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens in this one. It really is. Lillian Garcia is really milking her, uh, really milking her part in this one.
Come on, Lillian, we've heard enough of you now. Let's get to the entrances. What, what, what can she still be talking about? Maybe she's talking about the rules for the Hell in a Cell. I don't know. I've, I've got the audio turned off, and I think I've got voices turned off for you guys as well. Have we just glitched out here, maybe? This seems a bit odd. It shouldn't be taking this long normally to, uh, to get past this little bit. I'll give it another 10, 15 seconds and see what happens. If not, I might have to uh, restart the match. This is a brand new glitch on me if this is a glitch. I think this is definitely a glitch, isn't it? Right, okay. Can I restart it? Oh, there we go. I can press start and skip it. Okay, that's good. Right, that's not a problem now. We can get to the entrances. I don't know what happened. It's just... This game should just be just, just a series of glitches with a little bit of wrestling in the middle. That's all it basically is. Here's the WWE Champion, Batista. I know I keep switching between WWE and WWF. Uh, it's Attitude Era, so I feel like I should be calling it WWF, but it's just easier to call it WWE, I suppose. So Batista won the championship in the WWE Championship Tournament before the Universe Mode started. And then, of course, he defended it successfully against Stone Cold Steve Austin at the last pay-per-view as well. So he's done pretty well. Pretty damn well. So it'll be interesting to see how well he does here this evening against The Undertaker inside the Hell in a Cell. It could go down pretty badly for him, in all fairness. But let's see what happens. Let's just go and see what happens. I would like to see The Undertaker hold gold. I don't think I've had him holding any gold so far in any of my universe modes. Of course, he was in three versions last year on 2K15. He was in the, the current day roster. He was in the retro roster. And he was in the Attitude Era. And in none of them, he managed to pick up the championship. He had opportunities in them all, but didn't manage to pick up the gold. And uh, in this this year, of course, he's in the retro roster. But that's going to be finishing next week. Uh, he's in Attitude Era here, fighting for the championship. And he is also the number one contender for the WWE Championship in the current day roster as well. So there's a possibility when he goes on to face Bray Wyatt at our next pay-per-view, which I believe is Payback. I think it is Payback. And here comes Undertaker. Now, where's he going to put his bike in a hand in the cell match? That's an interesting one. I think this might be the first time we've seen the Undertaker's entrance in this universe mode. I might be wrong. In fact, I'm pretty sure I am wrong. Because I'm sure he had a match at Backlash. So in fairness, we should have uh, seen his entrance there and then. I should imagine he'll park his bike just out of the way. Because that looks, to me, where his bike is parked, it looks like the cell's going to crash straight on top of it. But hopefully, hopefully we're wrong. So Undertaker versus Batista, WWF Championship coming up right now. Hell in a Cell. This is going to be, this is going to be a good one. Hopefully, I'm hoping the game's going to going to throw out some some good footage for us it doesn't always but this time i'm hoping it does so there is the world wrestling entertainment championship there's the belt it's your champion batista defending against the challenger the undertaker And here we go. Undertaker straight away just forcing Batista back into the corner, showing his superior strength. The referee has to get between them. Now, I think what would make um, Hell in a Cell matches better, and it did, it was something that I could do on 2K15, and it did make it better, was changing it to a full scan anywhere format. That really made him, made the wrestlers a bit more open and to going outside and having a fight on the outside of the ring and in the cell and stuff like that, which was pretty good, but. There's, there's a very good chance in this match that both these guys will stay inside the ring and never make it to the outside, which is a little bit annoying. Because outside the cell is where all the, where all the excitement happens, using the cell to your advantage. There's chairs out there. There you can use the ring step. So it's it's a pretty good thing if you can uh, if you can really use it to your advantage. But the game is not fantastic at using its environment. And I wish it had that little bit more AI to think, you know what, we can go through the cell wall if we get an OMG moment. You know what, we can go and uh, crash into the cell. 
We can use some weapons on the outside. We can have a fight on the outside, do a bit more damage. But it doesn't seem to think that way. And I'm not sure if I'm expecting too much from the game or if we're at a point now where the game should be intelligent enough to think about that itself. But I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm just expecting too much. Like I say, there's a lot of glitches in this game still. So, oh, Batista's on the outside. Undertaker follows him. Go out there. Go on, Batista. Go back on the outside. Ah, oh, I thought we were going to go and fight on the outside. Batista stays inside. Undertaker comes back in to join him. And Undertaker throwing Batista over the top rope. And we are going to get a little bit of action on the outside of the ring. And Batista rubbing the face of Undertaker against the cell. And it's looking good. They are actually using the environment. That's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see them use their environment. Ah, oh, Batista throws Undertaker back into the ring. Come on, Batista. Why? And slides back into the ring himself. Doesn't even try and get a chair. Undertaker wrenching back at Batista. And a big back elbow. Batista drops into the ring. And Undertaker going to go for the pin here. One, two... So only a two count. I'm hoping they go back outside the ring again at some point because uh, I quite enjoy the idea of them fighting on the outside. I'm hoping we've not seen all of it so far. Undertaker has Batista throttled and there's a big choke slam. This match could be over already actually. One, two and Batista kicks out powerfully after the two though I must say. There's a snapmare there by Batista now locking in the chin lock. There's the jawbreaker there by Undertaker on Batista. The crowd firmly behind the Undertaker. Batista with a pin, it's only enough for a one count. Barely a one count. Batista now with a belly to belly slam on the Undertaker. Batista brings Taker back up to his feet and there's a big spear. In for the pin. One, two, and three. It was a bit anticlimactic, wasn't it? Well, Batista successfully defends his WWF Championship inside the cell against the Undertaker. The damage must have been done to Undertaker pretty early on because I'm surprised it took just one spear to finish him off and which was quite a quick match actually. A little bit disappointed with that, I must admit. But there you go, that's what the game's thrown out. Of course, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a much better match coming up next. Our six-man elimination chamber match. The Rock defending against Sid Vicious, Rikishi, Booker T, Edge and Stone Cold Steve Austin. There was a big choke slam by Undertaker early on. Only for a two count, though. Close to a... Well, I was going to say it's close to a two. I think it was more closer to a, to a two than it was a three. See, Batista just wrenching back at the chin of Undertaker. Taker managed to catch him in that jawbreaker. You see Batista straight back up to his feet, throwing Taker off and bringing him back into that power slam. In for a pin, but again, that was only enough for barely a one count. And just out of nowhere, this belly-to-belly -belly slam. And then a very short-distance spear. And that spear was just enough to finish Undertaker off. I'm, I'm surprised Taker's been beaten so easily here this evening. I really am. But, but there you go. Batista ends this feud on a high, successfully defending his WWF Championship once again. He defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin at Backlash. He's now defeated The Undertaker at Unforgiven. And wow, Batista's really becoming a very dominant dominant wrestler here in our universe mode. And it uh, be interesting to see who it is that gets the opportunity at him next month. Will it be Kurt Angle? He's got the opportunity. He's got the choice now between either Batista or the winner of our main event here this evening. Uh, who he wants to face at the next pay-per-view. We'll have to wait and see what happens. And we'll probably find out on Monday Night Raw. And now here we go into our main event this evening. It's going to be the Elimination Chamber match for the world. Heavyweight Championship as The Rock defends against Sid Vicious, Rikishi, Booker T, Edge and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And here we go straight into this one. 
no entrances in an elimination chamber match for some reason. I think that's because uh, oh, it actually does ah, that's better. So if you do an elimination chamber match in the um, in the universe, but it does actually put it in the correct arena. If you do an elimination chamber match in uh, in exhibition mode, it's always in the elimination chamber arena. So that's pretty good. At least uh, it's not a major problem. I'm pretty sure still if you do a Royal Rumble, I'm pretty sure it only takes place at the Rumble event. So we might have to try that at some point. Maybe on Monday Night Raw or or maybe on the Attitude Era's Friday Night Raw as War next week. Because I did it last year on 2K15. I did a 10-man a Royal Rumble to try and crown a number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. And it took us from the Raw Arena to the Royal Rumble Arena, which really annoyed me. But maybe they'll change that in this game. I have to double check. So it's Rikishi and Sid Vicious to start things off. So, of course, this is for the Rocks World Heavyweight Championship. The, the championship he won from Edge at our Backlash pay-per-view. And Stone Cold Steve Austin, the former WWE champ. No, he's not, actually, is he? No, I said that earlier. I'm, I know I had that wrong. He, he challenged Batista for the WWE Championship at the last page. He didn't win it, though. Now, Austin's starting straight away on Rikishi, if my memory serves me correctly, actually run Austin over with a car. Uh, forcing Austin out for nearly a year, I think. <laughs> I'm sure it was Rikishi. I just remember I did it for The Rock. I'm sure it was. Big knee to the face there by Austin. And Sid Vicious, who's probably been one of the most informed people in the universe mode so far. Of course, he is working Retro Roster at the same time. He's doing pretty well over in Retro Roster. Uh, and well, he's doing pretty well here as well. Picked up some big victories here. So, of course, Elimination Chamber match. Anybody can be pinned and eliminated at any point in the match, but... All six guys will periodically enter the match. Here comes entrant number four. It's going to be the champion, The Rock. So Edge and Booker T are looking pretty decent at the moment. They're both uh, the last two in. It's going to make it a bit easier for them to win. Let's see what happens. The Rock, of course, won the belt, like I said, from Edge at the last pay-per-view. And some people say he didn't quite deserve it. Of course, he had the, uh, the help of Farouk at ringside to help him distract the referee and distract an Edge as well. So Edge will be looking to to try and get the gold back here this evening. But actually, I think apart from Edge and The Rock, I don't think any of these guys have ever held gold in my universe mode before. So this will be interesting. We can have a, a brand new champion to me. The Rock just slamming Sid Vicious's face, or Psycho Sid, if you will, into the, the steel barricade on the outside. And oh, Rock almost eliminating Sid straight away. That was close, that was. with a backdrop on the outside who's entering next is the former champion edge which means Booker T is going to be entrant number six into this one Booker T is going to have a huge advantage going forward Austin just forcing Rikishi Ueno trying to catch him with the double axe hand I think he just got a little bit of him but Rikishi still had enough to send Austin over the top Rock again going for the pin on Psycho Sid and kicked out. Now, Psycho Sid, I think, was his name in the Attitude Era. And I think, uh, no, that was his name in the retro roster, shall I say. And then, um, and then he became Sid Vicious, I think, over in WCW. And Booker T should be entering the match pretty soon now, I think. And all six guys will be in. Rock with a big knee to the face of, of Sid Vicious. Pretty sure I just saw a, a little bit of blood there on the forehead of Sid. Rock with a pin. And again, Sid kicks out. And there we go. Booker T is in this match. All six guys are now on the go. And Rikishi with a two count. Austin. I wish you could do this match but without the cell. If we could just have a six way elimination match, I'd, I quite enjoy that. There's, there's no elimination matches in this game now. There's no four way elimination, no triple threat elimination. I used to use elimination quite a lot. I quite like elimination matches. It's a shame, it's another one of the things that, that 2K have taken out the game. All it was was the match rule screen. It was such a simple thing that we could change certain aspects of the match. We could change it to a first blood match or change it to best out of two, two out of three falls. Iron Man, submission only, no disqualifications. It was a great little bit because you could really create your own matches in it. But since they've taken that away, it's been a little bit annoying. But Booker T with the pin on Psycho Sid. And Sid is really struggling this one. Quite a few people have been trying to eliminate him. And the fact that Sid was one of the first two guys in and Booker T is one of the freshest guys in the match. 
It's not going to help Sid at all. Well, Sid back into this one. Our friend Booker over the top rope. Still yet to have a single elimination in this match. Well, Sid rolling Booker T over into that half, half Boston Crab. Well, Edge with a quick roll up here on Rock. One. Oh, Rock reverses the roll up. One. Two. Oh, and Edge just kicked out on the brink of three. Now Psycho Sid pinning Booker T on the outside only for, one, well, not even a one count, I don't think. Rock with a shoulder breaker there on Edge in the middle of the ring. Of course, these two continuing their match from the last pay-per-view of Backlash for the championship. Psycho Sid throwing Booker back into the ring as, as Austin and Rikishi. Whoa! Okay. Okay, you, you guys did see that, didn't you? Rikishi, are you going to make it back in the ring, Rikishi? Well, no, Austin's on the outside as well. What the hell's going on here? Can they get back in? <laughs> what is... What? <laughs> what the hell is going on? Right, they're back in. Someone's been eliminated. What? What? Just what? Just what? 2K, come on. Sort your... Oh, the champion, The Rock's gone. The World Heavyweight Champion, The Rock's gone. We're going to have a brand new champion here this evening. I was so confused in what was going on between Rikishi and Stone Cold Steve Austin. I didn't even see what had happened between The Rock. I don't even know who eliminated The Rock. But we are guaranteed a brand new champion here this evening. And God, this game is just an absolute piss take sometimes. It really is. I just, I just don't know how 2K have, have made such an incredibly glitchy game this year. It's just incredible that something this bad could be made. <laughs> no wrong, it's, it's, it's got its improvements on last year, but but some of these the glitches are just incredible. Austin down for the pin now. And there you go, there goes Booker T. We're down to our final four. It's Rikishi, Austin, Sid Vicious and Edge. Who is going to become the new champion? And can Rikishi and Stone Cold Steve Austin stay in the arena? Okay, Austin has just broken a pinfall in an elimination match. That's a bit strange. Rikishi can walk through metal objects. <laughs> There's something majorly wrong with this. I must admit, I think this is the second elimination chain match I've done. Of course, the first one was on the, the pre-show. But the pre-show seemed absolutely fine. Now look at... What is going on the outside there between Sid Vicious and Stone Cold Steve Austin? Rikishi just hit the Rikishi driver on Edge. Pins him. But Edge manages to kick out and Sid Vicious has like got a limp arm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There is some major... Maybe it's because it's not in the Elimination Chamber arena. It just seems to be glitching out majorly in this match. This is just glitch city out here. Rikishi now taking Sid up onto his shoulders, looking for a Rikishi drive on the outside on the steel. Oh, he's hit it. Surely Sid Vicious is out of this one now. Surely. Rikishi's gonna not even gonna go for the pin. Okay. I've got no idea why he did not go for the pin. He would have he would have knocked him out there, surely. Surely. Edge now with the, the neck breaker from the top on Austin. Of course, remember, Austin has had neck problems in the past. Edge of the pin now on Austin. Only enough for a two count. And again, Rikishi and Sid Vicious onto the outside. And Sid has Rikishi by the neck. And I think Rikishi's going to regret not pinning Sid when he had the chance. There's the choke slam, And Sid does go for the pin. One, two. And Rikishi kicks out. Very interesting indeed. Austin now just rolling Edge through that armbar. And there's a jackknife powerbomb on the outside there by Sid. And I'm sure that time, it's going to be Rikishi done and dusted now. What? Is this a glitch as well? There's no way Rikishi should be kicking out of a chokeslam and a jackknife powerbomb on the outside on that steel. Rikishi with a Samoan drop on on Sid Vicious, and that should be Sid Vicious gone, really. The amount of damage that Sid has taken in this match. 
Akishi now locking in that claw on the shoulder of Sid. Austin bringing Edge back up to his feet and there's a Stone Cold Stunner. Rikishi with the pin on Sid and Sid kicks out. Austin with the pin on Edge. And there goes Edge. We are down to our final three. Our new champion is going to be Stone Cold Steve Austin, Sid Vicious or Rikishi. Oh, looks like we had glitched through the... Uh... Oh, and again, straight through. They can walk through that. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to not even notice. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Sid, what's going on, Sid? Sid's having a seizure. Maybe we actually get the doctor in there. Yeah, Sid, throw him back in the ring. That's probably the best thing for all of us, really. You're watching WGW World Glitched Wrestling. Austin brings Sid back up to his feet. Sending him over the top back into the ring and Sid gets caught on that bottom rope across his neck and you see almost Austin and Rikishi not necessarily working together but seem to have some sort of silent... I forgot the word now. Is it silent... Treaty? Does that sound right? I don't know. You, you know what I mean. They're working together. Oh, they were working together. I take it all back. Rikishi, don't, don't send Austin back to the outside. That's where all the glitches happen. Here we go again. Sid's been bleeding now for quite a while. It's going to be really taking some of the energy out of him. Kishi now dropping Sid straight on his cheeks. Austin bringing Sid back up to his feet. I'm surprised that Rikishi and Sid have gone on this long. The two of them are really putting on a lot of damage onto each other. Rikishi now just pinching that trapezius again. Rikishi is in a great position here. The only man standing. Both Sid Vicious and Stone Cold Steve Austin are down. Only enough for a two count. Austin just twisting the head of Rikishi, sends him down. And this match is really starting to slow down a little bit now. Austin bringing Rikishi back up to his feet, sending him into this corner. Sid has Rikishi throttled and there is the choke slam and surely that's the end of Rikishi one two and Rikishi's kicked out again what is it with Rikishi on this game he's he's unbeatable oh he might not be unbeatable after this though Sid takes him up and slams him down the jackknife powerbomb and surely this time why is Austin still stunned and there we go, Rikishi has been eliminated and we are down to our final two. It's Sid Vicious and Stone Cold Steve Austin. Both these guys have gone from incredible, incredible glitches so far this evening. Sid Vicious just chokes them, Stone Cold Steve Austin from the top. And just slamming Austin's knee into the mat as well.
Sidewalk slam as well by Sid Vicious. It's starting to uh, build up for him now. Sid rolls over. One, two. Could it be? No. Austin kicks out with the tiniest little bit of energy he had left in his body. Sid now brings Austin back into the middle of the ring and pulls the legs and hits a big boot to the gut. Big back elbow there by Sid Vicious and Austin catches him with that neck break and it goes in for a pin. One, two. Still not enough though. Austin with a leg drop. How much more is it going to take to finish one of these two guys off? Austin Lockett in a, a steeper hold. Is that a chicken wing? Not into a Russian leg sweep. Clever little move there. Austin slowly clambering again towards Sid, but back up to his feet he gets. Dropping the elbows, down for a pin. Sid looks down and out here. This could be all. And no, Sid kicks out on the brink of three. Big needs to face a Sid as well there by Austin. Can Austin finish Sid off? It's been a it's been a difficult match for both of these two. More so, I think, for Sid, who was one of the first two guys in the match. But Austin is lining Sid up and Sid barely able to get back to his feet. Just in time to be caught by a stone cold stunner. And I think we've just found our new world heavyweight champion stone cold steve austin the first time i think he's held gold in my universe mode as well i don't think he held any gold in 2015 either so great to see him here we had some incredible glitches in this match which you can see little bits of here and there shoulder break on the outside i didn't actually see the rock be eliminated so maybe it might actually show us that I was too busy watching, I think, Austin and Sid Vicious. Uh, was it Austin and Sid Vicious or Rikishi and Sid Vicious? Like, halfway up the ramp having a little fight and I completely lost track of what was going on. Are we going to show us the elimination of the uh, of the rock? It's shown us quite a few highlights. It tends, to, it tends to show us loads of highlights from the beginning of the match. Then it tends to show us, like, the last highlight of the match, but it doesn't show us anything in between. I think in the Elimination Chamber, what it should show you is all six eliminations as the highlights. I think that's the main thing to do. Yeah, there you go. Look, you skipped all the other highlights and gone straight to the end now. Where Austin lined up Sid Vicious, or Psycho Sid, however you want to call him. And there's the Stone Cold Stunner. So Stone Cold Steve Austin is your brand new World Heavyweight Champion. Batista is still your WWE Champion. Kurt Angle is the number one contender for either of those two belts. He gets the decision now, and he will make that decision next week on Friday Night Raw is War. So it'll be interesting to see who he picks. Will he be picking to face off against Austin or will he be picking to face off against Batista? You'll have to tune in and find out. Well, that is the end of this episode and the end of our Unforgiven pay-per-view. I hope you have all enjoyed it. And of course, if you have, then be sure to hit that like button. It does help me out a lot. It makes the video easier for other people to find and ergo grow the channel a bit more. We have hit 2K subscribers now, so thank you very much for all your support. And hopefully we can uh, we can get straight on to 2,500. Now is that absolutely fantastic. I've been Shabby Gamer. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all tomorrow night for WWE Monday Night Raw.